Well, it's exciting to have faces here and people. <laughs> so we're well. I'm so glad that those of you who could make it have made it here today. We rejoice together. And those of you that are out there in Facebook land, uh, we're glad you're here with us too, joining in, in, in spirit and in heart. So it's just wonderful. We can begin to gather together, at least in some form, and to worship. So uh, it's just a, it's just a joy to have you here. So thank you all for coming. And and we know in time when things begin to loosen up a little bit, that maybe more and more we'll be able to come and join us here on Sunday morning. But we're going to continue to do this the way we're doing this for a while and abiding by these guidelines. But we trust and and in time again those will even be loosened up a little bit more. So again, what a, it's just a joy to be here. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for this day and for this time we've had together. Uh, And for those that are joining us on Facebook and listening in, Lord, we just pray for all those who are being a part of the service today. We we, uh, just uh, join together in heart and mind and soul and spirit, and we surrender ourselves to you during this time. And Lord, that that we might be willing to hear what you would have to say through your word. And and Lord, just use me for this time and that uh, the message will be clear that you want spoken and so i give myself to you and just pray father that as we go through this time together you would enlighten us to what we need to hear when we pray all this in christ's name amen a couple had taken a much needed vacation to hawaii they were excited about going down and just spending time on the beach and relaxing very busy hectic life so they went down to the beach and uh, the husband decided, well, he needed something to drink, so he went back up to the room and got, was getting some things out of the fridge and putting the cooler in. And he wasn't really sure if he could take this down to the beach, but when he got to the room, the, the maid was there cleaning and making the bed and so forth. And so he asked her, he said, can we have drinks down on the beach? And she said, yes, as soon as I get through cleaning all the rooms. <laughs> In other words, uh, uh, she misunderstood his communication. <laughs> we uh, Communication is part of life. Sometimes communication is difficult when we don't understand what the other person is trying to communicate. Or sometimes we don't communicate very clearly, but it's a part of life. And we like to communicate our feelings. We, we like to express ourselves quite often. And we do this uh, sometimes in our conversations. Facebook is a f- popular place to express your feelings, and uh, you know a lot of people get on there and do that. But we would love to communicate and and try to help other people understand what we're thinking. Sometimes we don't listen very well, but there's this whole thing of communication. And right now, there's a lot of stuff going on, as you know, a lot of information. Some of it's good, some of it's bad. It just seems like we're in this this time where there's so many things being said so many so many conspiracies coming out and you know the conspiracy theories and which one is right and which one is wrong and how do we know and how can we tell the truth in our series right now called overcoming the darkness we're dealing with this whole idea of god's truth related to the darkness that is in satan himself and that God has brought us out of that kingdom of darkness into a kingdom of light. But we looked at in our in our series here, we're looking we looked at the fact that there is a invisible spiritual world. We are so focused on the physical things that sometimes we forget there is a, a spiritual world. God is a spirit, and we have a human spirit. There are demons, there are angels, they're all around us. There is a literal world that exists that's just as real as the physical world. And we often tend to forget that. We also looked at the fact of the invisible war. There's a war, there's a battle going on that we don't see with our eyes. But we have, a, we have an enemy. We have Satan and his demons are warring against God and his truth. And they're warring over humanity. And we fight this battle with this this unseen enemy, but he's real. Just as real as any physical enemy we might have. We looked at that. Last week, though, we focused on our standing in Christ and to affirm our standing in Christ, that that's our defense. We have an enemy. We do not need to be afraid of him. We need to understand him. We need to understand some of his tactics. 
but we don't need to be afraid because we have a standing that is firm in Christ and we need to focus on who we are in Christ rather than who we were. And sometimes we focus too much on who we were rather than who we are. And that was our message for last week. This week, we're focusing a little bit more on the nature of the battle. And more specifically, what does the enemy do? What does he use to trip us up? And we're going to focus on that a little bit today in this message. First verse I want to review here with you. We've looked at before. John 8, 44, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and they've been, you know, they've rejected Jesus and arguing back and forth. And Jesus tells them this, you belong to your father, the devil. Well, that wasn't a very nice statement. <laughs> you belong to your father, the devil, and uh, you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies... He speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. All lies have their beginning with Satan. That's his nature. That's what he does. He, he doesn't do anything other than lie. He lies and he lies and he lies and he lies. And when we accept his lies, we can be deceived and fall into a, a pattern that is not true and right. And so we, we're looking at that this morning because what we're going to focus on today is the deception that sometimes we find ourselves in if we aren't careful. And if you look throughout the Bible, there's, there's a lot of deception. The Bible speaks a lot about deception. I didn't realize how much it was till I began going through and seeing all the things that the Bible says about deception, about how we can be deceived if we're not careful. And the reason we do this is, is to prepare ourselves. Not, you know, to know what the enemy's doing. Not to make us afraid, but to understand that there are things we have to watch out for. As we talked about in, in sports, you need to know what your opponent is doing. You need to be prepared for what he's doing so that you can hopefully win the game. If you're not prepared, you get caught off guard. And so we're, this is part of our preparation is understanding the nature of what Satan does. Satan, there are several things we find in Scripture that uh, about deception. It says we are deceived when we hear the word, and but we don't do it. James, in, in his book, says this, do not merely listen to the word and so to deceive yourselves. Do what it says. You hear what he's saying? If you only hear the word... And don't do it, you're deceiving yourself. If we think just knowing the Bible is enough, that's a deception. Because the Bible was written not to make us smart, it was written to change your heart. It was written to change the way you live. Also, we find in, in the Scriptures that we're deceived when we say we have no sin. In 1 John 1, 8, he says, you know, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. So be careful that you say, yeah, I don't have any sin. We talked about not identifying ourselves as a sinner, meaning that being our identity. But at the same time, we understand we, we haven't stopped sinning in a sense. We, we still have a sinful nature. So we don't deny that we're sinful people. But, so don't be deceived and say that we don't sin. Uh, we are deceived when we think we are something we are not. Galatians 6 3 says, if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. In other words, thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought to think is what Paul says in Romans. It's not, Paul says in Romans, to think of yourself correctly, but don't think of yourself better than what you are, because then you, you deceive yourself. We are deceived when we think we are wise in this age. 1 Corinthians 3 18 and 19 says, do not deceive yourselves. If any one of you thinks he is wise by the standards of this age, he should become a fool so that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's eyes. It is, as it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. In other words, don't think that the wisdom, true wisdom, is just from this world. We can learn a lot of things from this world. We can learn a lot of information. But true wisdom 
comes from God. And if we think wisdom only comes from life experiences, we're deceiving ourselves. Yes, you can learn a lot from life experiences. You can learn a lot in your area of whatever your area of expertise is and whatever your area of college, whatever you learn and whatever you study, you can learn a lot of information. But wisdom, true wisdom, comes from God. We don't need to think our wisdom is just from the world. James 1.26, we're deceived if we think we are religious and do not bridle our tongue. If you just talk and talk and talk and talk, don't think that you're a religious person. He goes on to say, you know, be uh, slow to speak, slow to anger, and swift to hear, swift to listen. Be careful about bridling your tongue. Um, we're deceived when we think... Um, Move on to the next one. We're deceived when we uh, when we think we do not reap what we sow. Galatians six says this: Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to the to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. Now that's a hard one because sometimes we do things and we sin and we don't see any immediate consequences of it. And so we just keep on doing it. But God's Word says, whatever you sow to, whatever you give yourself to, that's what you're going to reap. And so over time, if you continue to give yourself to the sinful nature, you're only going to reap some, some destruction of some kind. And so being careful not to give yourself over to the to the your sinful nature, but to the Spirit. And God says, if you think that you, basically, if you think you can sin and get away with it, you've deceived yourself. We, we're self-deception. We, we deceive ourselves in thinking, eh, it doesn't matter. Sooner or later, as a pastor I used to listen to, he said, sooner or later, the chickens come home to roost. <laughs> sooner or later, the sin will reveal itself. We're deceived when we think the unrighteous will inherit the kingdom of God. If we think that people who have never received Christ and are still in their unrighteous state are going to get to heaven just because we like them or they're a good person, we've been deceived. The only way to enter into everlasting life is through Jesus Christ, through faith and trust in Him. That's the only way, according to the Scriptures. But sometimes we think, well, you know, they're they're good in that religion, or they they follow this religion. They're a good person. They're a good neighbor. And so we think that, well, certainly they will go to heaven too. Jesus said, "I'm the only way." That's what he said. There's no way to the Father except through me. And so when we think people, just because we may like them, are going to heaven automatically, that's another deception which should motivate us to want to share the gospel with those that have never heard. We're, de we're deceived if we believe that acquiring money and things will bring lasting happiness. Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and, and pierced themselves with many griefs. slide here I think um, in other words we, we understand that money is not evil thank goodness You've got to pay my bills it's the love of money when, when we become obsessed with acquiring more money uh, that's that's what corrupts us and you don't have to be a rich person to love money and to be corrupted by money some people think it's only the rich that are at some rich, some rich people are very generous with their money. Some poor people are very corrupt because they, they can't live without getting more. So it's, it's the attitude toward the love of money. We're deceived when we believe that excessive food and alcohol can uh, relieve your stress and make, you, make us happy. Yeah, look at my wife. Yeah. <laughs> we like food. Who doesn't like food? Comfort food, we call it. Pizza, pasta, mm, that stuff is good. Nice big chocolate sundae for dessert. Yeah, I'm guilty. 
Um, we're deceived if we believe that gratifying our sexual lust brings lasting satisfaction. Um, I'm on the next slide here. Uh, we've talked about that God made us sexual beings, and in the marriage relationship, that is a good thing. But when he says sexual lust, what we're talking about is that sex outside of the bonds of marriage. When we begin to fulfill that over and over again. Many young people find that they think this is okay. I know a lot of a lot of young people who are, who get sucked into pornography and they think that, you know, well, I'll get over that when I get married. It doesn't happen. I've known of young couples whose marriage marriages were destroyed because of that that deception, that lie. I can do this for now, but once I get married, I, I won't, you know, I won't do that anymore. That that's they're deceived. It eventually brings destruction. <clears throat> We're deceived if we believe we need more than God has given us in Christ. Second Corinthians eleven. But I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you, you put up with it easily enough. We look. Some people look for all these other things other than what God has given us in Christ. We have enough to fight this battle, to live this Christian life in all that Christ has given us. And that's what we talked about some last week. That's what we're going to talk about more next week is the resources that are ours in Christ. We, we, we need to understand that what we need to live this life is complete in what Christ has given us. How many of you have received a, a phone call and somebody on the other end says, Sir, uh, we have a problem with your bank account or your credit card. And uh, would you please uh, verify your account by giving me your account number and your social security number? You ever received one of those calls? Now, hopefully most of us are smart enough not to do that. Oh, sure. Here's my bank account, my credit card, you know, my credit card number, my uh, my social security number. Anything else you need? No, no. There's scammers out there, and they call unsuspecting people, and sometimes they sound very serious. So you get a call. I've got a call before, and they left a message saying, Sir, you need to call us right away. We're going to uh, bring charges against you, and if you don't call us right away, we're going to have to proceed with, uh, you know, with, with these charges. Just call this number. And I'm assuming they want some money to, you know, whatever. I don't call them. But, but, but scammers, they're all out there. Scammers are everywhere. And, and now that all this, these trillions of dollars are floating around out there from the government, guess what? The scammers are getting busier and busier. There's all kinds of scams going on out there. The scams where they have websites that look very much like the federal government's website or, or, and so forth. And, and they're things you gotta be careful for because there are people out there trying to deceive you and steal your money. And we have to be we have to be careful. Every now and then we'll hear about a scam that's going on. Even the, the banks sometimes will send out information. Here's a scam we've heard about. Be careful. Or sometimes if you get this email, don't click on it because there's something in there that may ruin your computer or whatever. It, it's amazing. The people are so many people out there scamming and deceiving us. Let me tell you, Satan is a scammer. <laughs> that that's his whole that's his whole business is to scam and deceive and to lead us astray. And so all these things we're going over here is, is to prepare us. I mean, if there's some scam going out there, you would want to know about it, wouldn't you? You, you would want to be aware so you wouldn't you know, fall victim to these scammers. I mean, some of us are smart enough to know, but there's some stuff that sounds really good. And we wouldn't want to know. And so the reason we go through these things is to help us to understand that Satan is a scammer. That, that's what he does. He deceives and he scams to try to lead us astray. There's another area of deception that Satan uses, and he uses this through 
false teachers and false prophets. What's out for false prophets? Jesus says, I forgot to put the reference. This is Matthew 7. Uh, they came to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they were ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick up grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Jesus told us to watch out for the false prophets. They're people who come and, and speak and seem to sound very good. They look just like us. Sometimes they talk like us. But they're, he says, wolves in sheep's clothing. They're, they're really trying to deceive. And Jesus told us to watch out for that. In Mark, Jesus said, false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform signs and miracles to deceive the elect, if that were possible. So be on your guard, for I've told you everything ahead of time. Did you realize that Satan can perform signs and miracles? Signs and wonders? Back in Egypt, when Moses came and went to Pharaoh, the first three plagues were, were repeated by, by the Egyptians. They repeated the they, they repeated the same thing. He called his experts in, the, the Pharaoh did, and they repeated the first three plagues. They were able to turn water in the, uh, water into blood, just like Moses did. They, they, he can't do all the miracles that God can do, but the point is, signs and wonders don't necessarily prove the presence of God, and that's why we we need to be aware. We need to be careful because they're out to deceive. Signs and wonders. There's a big movement today, the signs and wonders movement. And because they're doing signs and wonders, we're supposed to fall in behind all of it, but we need some discernment. It doesn't necessarily mean it's all true. But there were also false prophets among you, among the people, just as there were false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and bring the way of truth to disrepute. Again, just these warnings that there are false teachers and we need discernment to try to understand. They, they bring destruction in their path. The last verse on this is in 1 John 4, 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone into the world. There was a, listen to the day, there was a preacher, pretty famous preacher, he was preaching, this was about a month or so ago, and he, he said that the Lord had told him that he was supposed to uh, call down condemnation on the coronavirus, and, and when he did so, he would end it. And so he gave this prayer, and he was preaching, and he was praying, and when he got done, he said, the coronavirus is dead. It's gone. Well, we're still waiting. You see, that's a false prophet. This man is a false prophet. He's very famous. He's very rich. He's very well known, but he's a false prophet because what he said didn't come true. And there's a lot out there, false prophets who are preaching and teaching, and we need to be careful. We need to test these things by the word of God. That's why it's so important that we know what it says, even when we even when we have to look at the negative stuff, even when we have to think about the fact that you and I can be deceived if we're not careful. We need to know what it says. This is our only source of, of objective truth. For the believer, for the follower of Christ, this is our source of objective truth. Sure, we have all kinds of experiences. We all kind of have all kinds of feelings. We... You know, all these things that are subjective that we cannot necessarily verify. This is our source of objective truth. And the only way to be prepared is to know the truth. Jesus said, if you follow me, then you will know the truth. And the truth will what? Set you free. Notice he said, if you follow me, then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. So we don't have to be afraid of it. We just need to be aware of what is happening. The last area here is that not only are there false prophets, but 
there are deceiving spirits in the world. The Spirit clearly says that in latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and the things taught by demons. Such teachings will uh, come through hypocritical liars, those whose conscience have been seared with hot iron. The conscience is what God gives us that tells us right and wrong. The conscience tells you when you're about to do something, is that right or is that wrong? That, that's a part of every human being. But if your conscience has been taught wrong or your conscience has been seared, as he says here, then you won't be able to tell that. And these people who come along, they, they, don't, they can't tell the difference between right and wrong. They're focusing on that which is false. They're focusing they're on the deceiving spirits. You see, this is another thing we need to understand that the spirits, the demons, are out to deceive us. And they can actually, demons can speak or they can sometimes actually plant thoughts in our minds. They can tempt us. They're deceiving spirits all around. Again, we don't have to be afraid of them, but we need to know they're, they're present or else we will be deceived. We'll go, the rest of this passage I started on, I'll go back to it. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone into the world, this is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge that uh, acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist which you have heard and is coming and even is already near. Um... What do people believe about Christ? That's really the law of the dividing line between that which is true and that which is false. What do you believe about Jesus? We, there's a lot of other things that we as Christians can disagree on. The end time stuff and, you know, we uh, Calvinism versus Arminianism and all that stuff. We can disagree on a lot of these things. But ultimately it boils down to what do you believe about Jesus? What do you believe about Jesus? Is he who he said he is? Did he truly come into this world as the Son of God to take on human flesh? To live a perfect life? To die in our place? To shed his blood and rise again the third day? And that salvation, the only way of salvation is through Jesus Christ. Is he our hope? Is he the one in whom we stand? Is he the one who gives us the victory? Do we know and understand who Jesus is and, and, and are we willing to take a stand on that? See, it all boils down to what you believe about Jesus. And are you secure in Him? And do you follow Him? These are the things that we must be certain about. The last, the last passage here. The dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard, that Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come. This is how you know it's the last hour. There's not just one Antichrist. There's a lot of stuff about the Antichrist, the Antichrist. He says there's many. There's many people who are against Christ. Many people in this world who are against Jesus and His teachings. Many people who, who say that Jesus really wasn't who He said He was. That Jesus... Billy didn't rise from the dead. But Jesus was just this, you know, this teacher who came along, this religious guy, pretty good guy, got crucified, but somehow he managed to survive and whatever. People then deny his miracles. Well, he really didn't do miracles. That's just what they said he did. They deny the truth about Jesus and they call themselves Christians sometimes. Those who are against the truth of Christ are called Antichrist. So what do we do? We need to test things. Test thoughts. You need to test even your own thoughts by the Word of God. Not every thought we have is always pure and holy and right and true, and we know that. <laughs> and so test your thoughts. Again, this is why this is important, because it, it gives us the mind of God. God is revealing Himself to us in here. And if you have trouble reading and understanding, 
Occasionally, we, I teach a class on how do you study the Bible? How can you get the most out of your reading and studying from the Bible? Not just for information, but for application. And so we need to know what it says and even test our own thoughts by what the Word of God says. Uh, test the teachings of others, other people, by the Word of God. Test what I have to say by the Word of God. Absolutely. You don't have to take everything I say as truth. Test it. Read it. It's okay. If you think I've misinterpreted something or taken some out of context, let's have a conversation. I've talked to people, and that's fine. I'm happy to sit down. Let's talk about it. I can be wrong. I'm not saying I'm right about everything. I'm still imperfect. I'm still learning too, but test it. Test it. That's why you take notes. Bring your Bible. Read your Bible. Is, does it really say that, or is he just telling you that? That's okay. Test me. Test the words. Is it truth? If you don't think so, let's have a conversation. I'm happy to sit down and talk with you. I've had plenty, sit down with plenty of people talk about things. Test the message you're receiving on TV and entertainment. Did you know that entertainment has a message? It's not just something to, most of it is not just something to sit down and just relax on. There's a message. Most TV, most movies, most things have a message that they're teaching. If you just watch, you're teaching a message. There's a lot of messages being communicated in entertainment today. We'll, we'll test it. What, what is that message? What's being communicated? What's, what's, being, what, what's in there that's contrary to God's truth? I'm not telling you don't ever watch TV or movies. I'm not saying that. I watch TV and movies all the time. It's just, what is it communicating? We need to test it. Because not everything is truth. Um, test the news. Boy, that's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> There's one, people say this, and somebody over here says that, and you know, it's like, what's, what's the truth? I don't know. Sometimes you can't tell the truth. How about Facebook? Oh, man. Whew. Of course we know everything on Facebook is true, right? I'm joking. <laughs> Test everything with the truth of the Word of God. That's the way, the only way we can not be deceived. I had a friend back in Colorado, and his wife had gone through uh, some cancer and basically had survived and come out the other side. But when... When she, when she came out of that, she was very discouraged and very depressed. And she entered into this thing of just kind of shutting down emotionally. It was kind of, it was kind of different. She would, she would go to work, she'd come home and she'd sit and watch TV or be on the computer all the time. You think that's what the guys are supposed to do, right? And he was, he was longing for have conversation with his wife. Ladies, does that sound familiar? <laughs> She's the guys that are watching TV and playing on the computer all the time and the women won't. Well, this was just the opposite. And she, she just totally shut down emotionally. And she got into this thing. She was buying stuff off the Internet. And she got into buying. He was telling me about it. They had literally hundreds of cookbooks that she had bought online. Never used one of them. Many of them were still in the boxes. She'd buy them, open them up, look at them, set them aside. He said their entire house was filled with boxes of stuff she had bought and never used. Uh, kitchen utensils and things. Uh, uh, DVDs. Stacks and stacks of DVDs that she bought. She opened them up and never took them out of the package. So she got in this thing of uh, what she was trying to feel good about herself was that rush of buying something. It's just that if I bought something new, that, that thing, that new shiny thing that, that looks so good, that, that new fishing rod, that looks pretty good too, you know. Whatever it is, you know. That, that, and so she got into this thing of buying and buying and buying. And, and she would come home. She would either sit and watch TV or buy stuff on the computer. He started canceling her credit cards. Cancel all her credit cards because he charged up this huge, massive credit card debt. She went out and applied for more credit cards in her name. She got them, and then he couldn't cancel them. And something had happened in this woman that turned her toward this, you know, that this was the only thing that would make her happy, was buying stuff and watching TV. 
I think, and I really think she was deceived in some way. A deceiving spirit had got into her heart somehow and convinced her the only way she could be happy was to do this stuff. You see, this is, this is an example of how deceiving spirits. I don't know ever what finally happened because we moved away, but I know that he struggled and he struggled. He thought about separating himself from her, but he didn't really want to do that. He didn't think that was the right thing to do. It wasn't the Christian thing to do, but he just, she was so sucked into this way of thinking that she could never come out of it. It was a deception. Friends, we don't have to be afraid of Satan and his deceptions and his lies. We just need to be aware. We need to be aware. And we need to stand firm in Christ. Because the truth is in Christ. The truth is in his word. And as long as we're focusing on that and keeping our minds pure and right before God, we don't have to worry about it. But if we're allowing ourselves to be sucked into the world, we can be deceived. Even Christians can be deceived. And so the message here is just to be careful. Stand firm in Christ. Keep your mind on Christ. Focus on the resources that are already ours, which is where we'll go next week. The message next week is focusing more specifically on the resources that Christ has given us to stand firm. I don't have time today to get into that. So that's the only thing about this series. You have to wait a week till you get to the next one. But uh, take hope in Christ. He is our hope. He is our sure salvation. And we can stand firm in him. Not fear the devil. Just be aware of what he wants to do and stand firm in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, the warnings we find in your word. Sometimes it's uh, sometimes we don't like to hear those warnings. Sometimes it's uh, maybe it's discouraging. Maybe it's... Uh, a little heavy to think about what's going on around us, to think about that there is evil in this world, that Satan is still alive and well right now, and he is working to trip people up, to lead believers astray, to keep people from believing in you. And so, Lord, just let us not be afraid, but let us be aware. And let us focus and take our hope and stand firm in our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because He is real, He is true, He has provided us all that we need for our life spiritually. He's given us, we have the Holy Spirit, we have that ability to have discernment through the Spirit and through Your Word, and we have the hope and the promise of everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for us. Thank you for the power that you've given us in our lives through the Holy Spirit. Thank you we don't have to be afraid of this enemy who is all around us. Thank you that we can stand firm. And thank you for your truth. We will not be deceived, but we will live in the light and the truth and in the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For it's in his name I pray. Amen.